Greetings, ladies and laddies, and welcome back to a cool but highly heretical video. In today's project, we're gonna try to do two things. First, put this poor marine through all seven circles of Papa's gifts in the span of 10,000 years. And secondly, achieve all of this before the Inquisition finds out where I live. Sounds good? Perfect. Then let's stop wasting time and head right to the mini. The Space Marine we are defiling today is a 3D printed version of the Imperial Fist Champion Tor Garadon. The print or cast is actually so well done that I was really struggling trying to find out whether it really was a homebrewed model or a GW licensed one after all. But apart from him being slightly chunkier than our usual marines, there were many differences in terms of outfit and props as well. Having the model all assembled and primed white, we will start the paint job by giving him the pre-heresy Death Guard look, starting with a slightly off-white actual color for his armor. The year is somewhat around M30, and the Emperor's Crusade is still in full swing as his children are doing their best to make his dream a reality. Mortarion's legions clad themselves in cleansing white, with grass green being their accentuating color, as found on their pauldrons and knee pads. For their trims and metallic ornaments, like the aquila on their chest, we'll take a rich true metallic brass paint. Countering all of the brightness that's going on with this mini so far, we take a dark brown for his leather baltier and his other belts, as well as a dark grey for his cloak. We also want to use this grey to paint the cables and the casing of his shoulder mounted plasma gun. With the knuckles of his power fist taken care of, it's only really the details that are left, like the purity seal on his baltia and his face of course. Great! Having all of the colors in place, it's time we give the model some more depth with a quick coat of black wash. Now, I always tell you guys to be quick with your washes, especially on smooth areas. Because if you're not, you'll end up like me here, with lots of ugly tight marks and a really dirty look in general. So before we can proceed, I need to take care of this mess. Do not do it this way at home, alright? Cleaning up the armor was very time consuming, and the only reason I didn't mind this was because I was really eager to paint after weeks of just editing the last two videos. The smart move would have been to just panel line the recesses with black, but anyway, after the cleanup was done, we take the same green as before and give the pauldrons and knee pads some subtle highlighting. <laughs> Don't worry, it might look stark here but after it's dry, the contrast will be way less intense. After intensifying the contrast of the cloak by putting some black into the depth of his folds, it's time for more details. Some writing on the parchments, some fire for the coils of his plasma weapons, and of course, the number of his legion on his left pauldron. Which I messed up, because I misread it while doing the research. Well, ain't this a nice iron hand? And anyway, the Bezaku gets a nice skull decal. And with this, our M30 Death Guard is fully complete in all of his clean and pristine glory. This is actually the first Space Marine I've ever painted, and I really get the appeal of painting a whole army of these guys. But Jan, this Marine is clearly a Primaris, which makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, well... Then add that to the list of erratic mischief the Inquisition will want me to have some tea over about. If you think this is bad, then buckle up and pull up your socks for what's to come. The year is somewhat during M35. The Horus Heresy is already a thing of the past, and the traitors got their asses handed to them. For our lad right here though, the years haven't been too bad, as Papa is starting to hand out his gifts to all his loyal minions. My friends got me a lot of cool tools and green stuff to play around with, and today I'm excited to put them to good use. Let the carnage commence. Starting off small, we take our hobby knife and give his armor some good old wear and tear. Ripping off his arm might be a step too far, but we'll come back to that later. 
trust me when I say that this was really painful for me to do. Not only destroying the model, but the laborious paint job along with it. But that's exactly what we're here for, isn't it? For the heavy damage, we need to, quite literally, pull out the big guns. After all these subtractions, it's time we add some stuff back into the mini. Starting with this cool skull bit I found. I think it could look really cool in his pauldron, so I got myself a little bit of green stuff and prepared it to be attached. Well, I say a little bit, but in hindsight this was quite an excessive amount. Then we take some more green stuff and roll it up into rolls like this. I wanted to add some fleshy gore to this guy, and the rolls serve as a means to help us to get the stuff everywhere where we want it. Once in place, we can just sculpt it to our wishes, or in my case, to my rookie abilities. The last thing I added was some more gore on his right leg, and we're done. I don't want to go too overboard just yet, but I think these little modifications are a good ground to start from. Integrating all of these additions into the composition of our model, we start with a dark brown for all of the damaged parts. After that, it's time for some weathering, taking a rich, sandy beige and lightly dirtying the model up. Here we really want to hug the edges and recesses. You know, all the parts where dirt would settle in and not be disturbed. Being done with the sand, we take a light, sicklish looking green and basically do the same thing all over again. I don't know if this is moss or just the sheer amount of bacteria gaining a foothold, but it is part of the post-heresy death guard, so we don't ask questions and just do it. After the armor, we take a bit of dark brown to dirty up his cape, before moving on with a rosy flesh color for the added gore. As it is a base paint, we can apply it without having to prime the bits. The same thing holds true for a true metallic brass paint, as we paint the skull on his pauldron. Circling back to the fleshy swellings, we lighten it up with a bit of rosy terracotta and then turn to all the balls of pus, picking them out with a bright yellow and then a light khaki for the top. Oh yes, this is gross. Talking about gross, we can go even further by taking a glossy red wash and layering it over the fleshy parts, but not the pus though. After giving the skull some depth with a quick black wash, it's time for some really nice aging effects. This is Citadel's technical color Nihilac Oxide, and when applied in the recesses of metallic ornaments for example, it makes for a really cool weathering effect. And with this last trick, stage 2 is completed as well. Considering it's been 5000 years, I think he held up quite well. Sure, his armor is better than dirty, and his mortal body is also starting to show the first signs of corruption, but the white of his glorious past still shines through. Maybe, even after all this time, he still isn't sure about the coup against the Emperor, still clinging to his former self, and only reluctantly accepting Papa Nurgle's gifts. But this is just the halfway point. The year is somewhat during M41. Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade has smashed through the Cadian Gate and unleashed the Kickatrix Maledictim upon the galaxy. In the Ultima Segmentum, the Plague Wars are still raging on with Marines fully committed to the cause, as their Primarch awaits his reborn brother on Pestiliax. 5,000 more years of constant war bring ever more tarnish upon our Death Guard's armor, so we start this third phase with our snipping tool, ripping off the purity seal and punishing Baltia and Cape. Originally, I wanted to snip up the plasma gun as well and sculpt a tentacle holding it, but sensing just how brittle this plastic is, I let it be. In terms of new additions, I found this machete, which could make for a really cool plate knife in my opinion. Snipping off the grip 
It fits just perfectly into his left fist. I also replaced the antenna of his aiming system with a spear tip and parchment. After that, it's time for more green stuff action. The first thing you want to make are fabric strings for the cape we just mutilated. Then we take some more green stuff and roll it into a long string, leaving it a bit thicker towards the end. I wasn't 100% sure if this would work, but the result around the plasma gun is really something. Next up is the horn coming out of the guy's forehead, which will surely have grown in all these years. Bending it into roughly the right shape, we just put it on top of the smaller one, and to make it stop looking like a Christmas hat, we push it on properly with our moistened sculpting tool. I also did a lot more gore to his leg, and the part of his back where the tentacle was coming out. Not being stingy with the amount of extra blisters, pus boils, and maggots. In terms of the paint job, we start by really dulling down the shine of his armor with yet another black wash. While that's drying, we take our rosy flesh color and paint the new goal with it, just like before. For the tentacle, I chose a rich dark green to make it stand out, though I will change my mind about this later. The bits of fabric, of course, get painted in the same grey as the rest of the cape. For the plastic extras, like the plague knife and the parchment spear, we should start with the black primer this time. And while that dries, we have enough time to properly tend to his horn. Starting off with a dark grey, over a mustard yellow, to the details with a light khaki. The many extra boils get painted the same way as before, starting with a bright yellow base coat and then a light khaki on top. When we turn to the plague knife again, we start off with a dark true metallic silver. This of course is way too clean for a plague marine, which is why we now take an old battered brush that's past its best and use it to achieve an effective rust look, starting with a rich brown over our mustard yellow and finish it off with a few spots of bright orange. Now you might say, Jan, this color doesn't look like paper. Well, that's because it might actually be something else. A quick brown wash to bring out the folds, and we're left with an already pretty impressive plague marine. But we're not quite done with him. He still looks a bit too... clean. First, we take some rich brown and paint it basically over all the same areas we picked out during stage 2. The main difference being that we are quite a bit more generous this time. That being said, I still look out to not cover absolutely everything of the white armor, leaving a handful of spots still unchanged. The difference that this step alone makes is already quite the looker, but there is still more grime to come, this time in the form of some olive green over yet again the same spots. The reason this works at all is because we have the paints thinned down with quite a lot of water, so they can just layer over one another without fully covering each other up. This is how our fully weathered plague marine looks now, but there's still just a handful of things that I want to do before calling his corruption complete. First we want to use some more of our Nihilac Oxide. Where we put it down sparingly before, we now want to go all in painting it into absolutely every crevice these brass parts have to offer. After intensifying the gore with yet more of our glossy red wash, we take a bit of light grey and roughly pick up the upper parts of the cape's folds. This, in addition to some more of that sandy beige, really makes the cape look torn and worn. Now was the time that I changed my mind about the tentacle, as it was looking just so out of place and unfinished. After highlighting it with a bit of rosy terracotta, I even gave some parts a bit of our red wash, to make them appear bruised and inflamed. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, blue is usually a good guy color. Definitely not fitting this foul creature. Which is why I decided to change this ammunition from pure plasma to a rotten, demonic parody of such. After properly igniting the now yellow plasma, we take a fine brush to add some writings on his big parchment, 
And lastly, use a light khaki to make his skin look paler. More akin to the Plague Marines in the Hammer and Bolter show. Finally, after 10,000 years, our masterpiece is done. Hot damn am I pleased with this look. This project had a whole lot of firsts for me. First time using green stuff, first time doing any significant weathering, and the first time seriously altering the cast of a model. And to top it all off, we did this by starting on an already pretty nice looking miniature. As much pain as it was for me to tear it apart and ruin the paint job, and as frustrating it was to work with the green stuff for the first time, I am really happy and excited about this project, and I hope that you had just as much fun watching this video. If you guys have any tips on weathering and working with green stuff, be my guest and share your recommendations in the comment section. As a last thing, I just want to quickly address the slow pace of my videos recently, which really is because of a whole bunch of different circumstances, but mainly just boils down to two main ones. First, as you may know, I tried enlisting into art school, and finally, after my requests being rejected over and over and over again, one academy actually accepted me. Classes will start at the end of this year, and I need to figure out moving and all that stuff. And secondly, I very recently got a huge project brain upon me, which I will need to take care of first before picking up my regular schedule again. What this project exactly is, I will tell you in another video. But one thing I may just say right now, it's almost twice the model count of the Cursed City. In any case, I hope you had fun watching this and maybe feel compelled to subscribe, as I am really looking forward to seeing all of you again in my next video. Until then, take care and have fun painting.